Hit it! All right. I forgot my water. Oh, no. I get parched. Welcome to the Grappling With Podcast. Dr. Chris Hardy and William Walker will take a deep dive into topics covering wellness and prevention, performance, recovery, and injury management. Our mission is to provide the latest science-based information to help you get the most out of your grappling journey, both on part. and off the mat. Her voice is very relaxing. I like it too. You may be grappling with. <laughs> Dr. Hardy is a licensed physician and part. BJJ okay. practitioner, but the contents of the podcast this are meant for Dr. educational Hardy. purposes only oh. and should not be taken as medical advice. Please seek out personalized Gosh. care from your own medical provider prior to implementing any medical treatment or intervention. You might as well do your disclaimer. Yes. Also, also, I say silly things yep. that only represent me, nobody else. No, they represent my dad, too, by default. Definitely. He's yeah. lumped in. So anything that I say that happens to be <laughs> or... <laughs> or really, Bill? What's wrong with you? My oh. husband, oh. that could be a problem. Let me finish. <laughs> yes. Solid. <laughs> Let me finish. What I was saying is anything I say that's <laughs> is a joke. Got Don't it. take it seriously. No, just, okay. I, he's going to get himself canceled. I swear <laughs> my life. I'm not going to get canceled for my disclaimer. <laughs> I'm going to need to do a disclaimer for your disclaimer. Don't you think? Just send Dr. Chris Hardy an email if you're upset. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. Well, awesome. Sounds good. Well, (laughs) uh, since she's already interjected, let me as well introduce her. Mm -hmm. This is my offspring. Some would call Spawn. Mm -hmm. Um, Anna, now Andreev. She's not Anna Hardy anymore. Uh, This is a good name. Well, she's (laughs) Andreev. Mm-hmm. Her husband Alex Andreev. Mm-hmm. Alexander. Her, Alexander. Does he listen to the podcast? Sometimes with me, yeah. Has he heard my Russian accent? Uh, maybe. I bet he likes how I just said the last name. Oh, I'm sure he put a little spice in there, and I think yeah. he liked it. Well, speaking of Russians, before we get started, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we had a very <laughs> naughty Russian mm-hmm. oh, yeah, we did. play a trick on us. That last sounds like podcast. a good joke. A naughty Russian walks into a bar. Mm-hmm. So we were very excited last, last week because we thought Kyle Bame. No, it's not that we thought. We knew Kyle Bame started watching our, our podcast. podcast because he commented on YouTube and we talked about it for about 20 minutes. We were super excited. Yeah. Yeah. Really pumped. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'll start cussing. It, it turns out that Nikita... The infamous Nikita mm-hmm. um, made some Russian bots. He did <laughs> literally a Russian bot because he's Russian. Yes, and and uh, impersonated Kyle Bame. He did. He created a profile. He added a profile photo. Even he lurked Kyle's personal pages and put his own thing in there. And he was the one that actually made those comments that we talked about for twenty minutes. So he's in big trouble. Yeah, um, especially, you know who he's in big trouble with? Kyle? Ice. Oh, why? <laughs> I called Immigration Services <laughs> oh. immediately. <laughs> and I said, hey, I know that Russia has been in the news lately. You might want to check this one out. <laughs> he might be playing both sides. Yeah. His name's Nikita. He's yeah. Not, he's hard to miss. Right. 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 And he's kind of a half blood. <clears throat> That's what we call him when they're half Ukrainian. Half like a mud blood. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I didn't say that. That was Chris a lot Hardy. Of Harry Potter references in this podcast. We're not. We're not shy to get nerdy with it. Okay. You're Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff over here. Ugh. <laughs> I'll show you my. Um, was it Grindor? Gr- Gryffindor. Griffin. I have Grind- I think, Gryffindor boxers on. I think he's a Ravenclaw. Oh, for sure. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, well. Yeah. Since I know my daughter very well. Mm-hmm. I would like you to conduct an interview and I will interject as appropriate. And okay. so I think, away. I think everybody that listens and watches would just like you to leave really, but um, <laughs> you can stay and we will talk okay. and you just sit there like the creepy old guy at the DMV. And then if you got something to say, you raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Good. Wow. <laughs> we get a little legalistic in here. Yeah, you sit there and enjoy it. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? 
What okay. color are your eyes? What's your favorite color? Okay. How'd you start jujitsu? All right. Where do you do jujitsu? I'll start with that. Okay. I live in Colorado, mm. Denver area. I train under Professor Matthew Jubera. Mm. He's a six blades guy mm -hmm. under Shanji and um, Salo Hibero. Yep. So is it a six blades affiliate or a Hibero? It's um it's six blades affiliate, okay. I believe. Yep. Sweet. Mm -hmm. So if I remember right, he is one of the first. I believe Matthew Jubera is his first black belt. Shanji's? Yes. Uh is it first black belt or first American? Um I don't oh, know. I need to do some homework. I put you on blast. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, professor. <laughs> I, should, <laughs> I should know which one it is. Um, yeah. I, I can look on his website and, the lashings, and say it in the comments. Yeah. The lashings so. will be light, but there will be lashings <laughs> uh, or belt strikes. Oh, boy. So how long have you been doing jujitsu now? Um, kind of a tricky answer. I'm sure. going for the, the record of longest white belt. <laughs> So started Good. probably 2013 mm -hmm. around there. Um, I had actually started doing Krav Maga back mm -hmm. in Virginia mm -hmm. and I loved it. And my professor or he's a kickboxing guy. So yeah. coach, coach, I guess. Yeah. yeah. He, um, I trained out at Tech MMA Academy out in Christiansburg, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And, um, he was saying, well, one, do you want to try an MMA class? So I did. Mm -hmm. And then I moved on to kickboxing and it was fun until the, real sparring happened where you get hit in the face a lot and right. apparently i have a uncontrollable stress response that involves like sobbing <laughs> it's really embarrassing <laughs> it's okay. i was like I, yeah. i'm not hurt i don't know why this is happening yeah, it's like yeah. a nervous system sure. thing yep. i don't know um so he suggested like oh maybe you'd like jujitsu better because yeah. he is starting to do that do those courses at his school mm. so tried that Really liked it, and I've just been the queen of taking years long breaks. <laughs> so it just means you're really, really good white belt. Well, actually, <laughs> I don't believe you're a white belt, right? Yeah, I'm a green belt. So Six Blades has a green belt mm -hmm. right before blue. Mm -hmm. It's so. like a nice like in between there. And yeah, kind of distinguished to be able to take some of the advanced classes. So. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with their curriculum, they, they kind of separate in that way, right? Mm -hmm. With the very beginners and, um, and then advanced or, or intermediate, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what was that? I just had to interject. I looked up. the. Oh, thank you. Sorry, professor. professor. <laughs> so on the, on the website, it says he's the first person that Shanji put a black belt around and is sol solo mm -hmm. fourth American black belt. Also known as pretty legit. Yeah. He is. That's that's uh those are some credentials that you can kind of <laughs> brag about right there. So that that's really cool. We uh we have a f I, we have a, a connection with Six Blades also, not Cascade Jiu Jitsu, but uh our friend Aurelius, he he's uh trains at Six Blades gyms also down in Austin, um, Dallas Fort Worth with under uh, Maha. I believe that's Why where um, Shanji, at least, is based. Austin. Yeah, he moved when Shanji and Salo uh, just kind of made their own. They they were always Habero Jiu-Jitsu, and then Shanji just wanted to kind of have his own uh, little bit of lineage there. Um, so he created Six Blades, which they're still connected and everything like that. Just a little bit different branding and curriculum, if you will. And then Shanji left uh, California, opened up Austin Six Blades which I think just opened a couple months ago officially because they, he has a new building and everything. But uh, Dallas Fort Worth is where Lionel Maha is. And uh, um, and Shanji goes there all the time because I think it's not too far of a drive. And then you have Victor Hugo and mm -hmm. Steve Hargett, which opened another gym in Lake Travis. I don't know where that is. I just know it's like in between those two. Mm -hmm. So uh, Six Blades is really doing well in Texas down there. Nice. <laughs> um, so we have kind of a connection because because of Aurelius and, and he's trained under Steve Hargett forever so um, it's like a nice little mm -hmm. little love nest that yeah. we call it um, so you did some Krav Maga yes interesting yeah because there's a lot of people in the martial arts world they there's a ton of martial arts but there's typically a few that they connect together as being legit right you have your kickboxing uh you have your muay thai you have your wrestling um 
you have your uh, judo, jiu-jitsu, and a lot of times Krav Maga does get thrown in there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes left out, but a lot of the time it is thrown in there as being a legit martial art. I think the reason it gets left out to some people is because a lot of the techniques they show uh, can so just naturally, just even in jiu-jitsu, we have some fluff that only works in a sporting jiu-jitsu match. Krav Maga has the same thing, right? And then it's difficult to spar in Krav Maga. Like, there, there's not as much, kind of like you start doing kickboxing sparring. Yeah. It's hard to actually do those high-effort sparring rounds. Well, those would come typically during belt testing. Sure. You'd have, a like, a round robin. Right. People would come at you. and Rather than... Yeah that's part of like the the normal curriculum and in, in your journey right it, it's it's yeah. more in the testing phase you're not sparring every day yeah it's not it's not the same as yeah. you don't do rounds i guess sure yeah so, so what yeah slipping okay. oh yeah they <laughs> slip in. so what do uh what would you say transferred from your or if anything from the um, krav maga training to your jiu-jitsu training i would notice with certain things standing like the mm-hmm. self sometimes we'll do a self-defense portion like standing with right? at a uh, jiu-jitsu yes yeah. um like a drill mm-hmm. standing drill and sometimes the self-defense stuff particularly like holds like wrist grabs and stuff that will feel a little bit more like muscle memory mm-hmm. um less as time has gone on sure because i probably stopped krav maga in like 2015 when i moved up to Michigan, mm-hmm. so. But they, I assume they taught some like the basic principles of let's say wrist manipulation, like yeah. controlling the elbow, and, and there were throws too, mm-hmm. like there'd be judo throws, kind of like judo, like hip tosses. Y- yeah, the hip like tosses, my my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, favorite sarcastically in the sense of flying over someone's not sure, sure. Great sometimes, <laughs> but it feels really cool when you do it to somebody. Oh yes, I absolutely. actually hit my first uh, like drop sayonagi in sparring like i just i just never been one for turning throws so that's the one where Mm -hmm. you know drop saying so like you have the collar and then you turn all the way that your back's to him yeah 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 (laughs) i made the sound too and it's crucial crucial stuff it doesn't work if you don't do it no you don't it's like the tennis grunts 100 percent um so i did it on our good good friend aaron he's a two-stripe white belt in uh, the day class, <laughs> you're a monster. I crushed him with it, um, but <laughs> he listens to this, so that'll be good. Uh, but I, um, that was my first time, like really just committing towards it, and it feels so good. I didn't care if it was in sparring or whatever, or if it's a two stripe white belt. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I literally went home and bragged to Olivia. He did. <laughs> the funny thing about that throw, it can go horribly wrong. Yeah, and that's why if you. Uh, plug in Danaher's feet to floor. Mm -hmm. He he talks about some of the lower risk throws Mm -hmm. in jiu-jitsu that you can do. Like He shows a Tayatoshi, which is a turning throw, but there's a way to do it that is a little bit less risky. You're not getting your back quite as much. Yeah, rather than a Sanai, you're you're fully turning. You got to get that chest-to-back connection so you can load them up. Man, when you do it, it feels good, boy. Mm-hmm. I feel real good. So, um, so okay, you had some stuff transfer over. Yep. Which one do you like more? Oh, jujitsu. Why? Um, it's just fun. Yeah. I, I never was a huge fan of like the hip throw stuff because it just felt like it was the reps over and over. Mm-hmm. It was just felt like it was getting the wind knocked out of me if I fell the, the wrong way, which happened. Do they teach like break falls? Oh yeah. Stuff? Oh yeah. Just like if you weren't on your game that night you could just right yeah. or the yeah. throw technique wasn't the best yeah something yeah so i yeah. just felt like the consequences for doing a rep badly could be bigger but it was mm-hmm. it was a lot of fun i that's what got me into martial arts to begin with so i yeah. have a lot of love for it but jiu-jitsu just you know, seems more of I, my speed yeah. i never asked you why did because you were at virginia tech at the time yeah in college why what prompted you to get into it anger probably? <laughs> anger about you. Displaced anger. Tell me, tell me more. Uh, just stress from school and um, talk to you all the time, like every day. Yep. I'm sure you remember fondly. If I talked to him every day, I would want to go let out some anger too. Oh no, <laughs> no, he's uh, very much talk off the ledge kind of talks. College yeah. was not a 
great great place for me yeah, i yeah. had a lot of amazing friendships and mm -hmm. but just that that environment's not uh conducive to my personality really the sure. social aspect so it was really hard and I just needed an outlet and I maybe wanted some outside school friends to just kind of root myself a little bit mm -hmm. so um, I think you were the one that suggested martial arts of some kind and I just like I found Tech MMA Academy uh, and had yeah. you been training any martial arts at that point? yeah yeah I did I've dabbled Throughout okay. the years. But you hadn't started your jujitsu walk no, yet. No, no, no. Okay. Not, I didn't start till 2015. Yeah, I actually started before him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. She's technically your senior. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're supposed to be training tonight, too, so I yeah. don't want that energy. Oh, and he is a vengeful <laughs> little biatch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. One guy called him Radio Shack once. Oh, I heard that. Yeah. yeah. And, and someone the repeated ducks. it yeah, yep, the, all in that. the gym. And this guy beats him up for two rounds. Look at him. He's happy. About it. I was pretty he's happy about, about it. Was right a white belt you beat up too? Huh? Was it a white belt too? Oh, yeah. Well, you shouldn't have called me Radio Shack. <laughs> That's all I got to say. It sticks though. It sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Andrew loves it. <clears throat> yeah, he does. So, um, okay. So, yeah. I mean, I, you had a pretty stressful school too. I mean, oh, yeah. grad, you know. Uh, well, I, I stayed for grad school, but um, I started my last semester of undergrad. So. Okay, I was trying to. I, it's all a blur the timeline. Yeah, well, I remember I was all excited at graduation. I dragged whoever would go with me. It might have been you, Carrie, like, I went, or my mom. To I was like, you guys have to come to Krav Maga. I was still in my makeup and hair from graduation. I like got in my gi and I was like, you guys gotta watch. I was still a white belt mm -hmm. in that too. <laughs> so so a couple of things there. <clears throat> what was it that got you so excited during that Krav Maga? Because a lot of people have that in jiu-jitsu, and you, maybe you had it again when you started jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. uh, is that initial excitement. Some people, it's very nerve-wracking, but some a lot of people, once you start, you're like, I love this. Well, it's both. During yeah. the class and before class, it's nerve-wracking, anxiety, all that. And Sitting then, in the parking lot, yeah, like, and I then, don't even know if I'm going in. Yeah, and then during and after, just elation. I don't know, mm -hmm. just a positive place for those bad, big feelings to go. Mm-hmm. You can like tap into them, but then yeah. you can tackle them. Yeah. Well, also. I think it's just kind of an, an innate interest in me too, because I, I'm i a big daydreamer. I often mm -hmm. would daydream about fighting people. Sure. So <laughs> going John Wick in your mind. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I just, uh, I like it. Yeah. So, so you, you mentioned some, a little bit about the social aspect in college. It wasn't really your bugaboo. No. Well, what, how did that, how'd you deal with that? Well, first of all, what do you mean? Okay. And, and then second of all, how did that work with starting like jujitsu classes? Yeah. So it's also a social right. thing. So how, why college wasn't yeah, maybe like, the best environment for me to start? Um, like socially, like you kind of struggled. With yeah. It. So college, the typical college experience is centered around partying and drinking. Mm -hmm. And because of we don't have like five hours and it's not a therapy session, but because of some things with my childhood, I just mm -hmm. did not have a good relationship with alcohol. I've mm -hmm. never been drunk, never drink mm -hmm. really anything except a sip of something. Yeah. That look, LaCroix actually has vodka in it, but oh well, <laughs> <laughs> we just trying to loosen you up. <laughs> um, so yeah. And then like my boyfriend, he's my, my husband now is, mm -hmm. was my high school boyfriend's big partier. So con confronting that and his group of friends and, um, it just put me in, envir in an environment that made me have to confront all those bad childhood feelings. Now you're surrounded it. by it, too. Yeah, yeah. You feel yeah. like you can't escape. And yeah. even your closest friendships that you develop, of course, they're going to want to go go drink and yeah. in high deal school, with that. In high school, you can actually kind of escape. I just go home, like where your parents are. They're mm -hmm. not big drinkers, you know, whatever. So you're like, okay, fine. Yeah. And, but in college... Especially yeah. if you're living on campus. Or I something did for like the that. first year. Yeah. <laughs> you're not getting dis away from anything. That no. was a disaster for you. It was not great. I'm yeah. I'm sorry to my freshman year roommate to deal with my emotions. <laughs> so <laughs> shout out. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Uh, um, okay, so how did some of those anxieties and, and social aspects how do you tackle those when it came to the jujitsu room? Because that can be really intimidating. Now I think it sounds like you got those initial bugs out a little bit when it came to Krav Maga, mm -hmm. but then jujitsu 
it's a little closer. <laughs> yeah. It's a little more intimate. Well, I was already comfortable with the people because I had, I, um, my grappling partner, my main partner, Michelle Lewis, like she was so great. And part of the social aspect that made it easier in the MMA gym was everyone, there's older people there, everyone's at different parts of their life. Yeah. A lot of people drinking was not necessarily, it's not really any part of, part of their identity. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and just like the common goal of learning something really hard and physically yeah. challenging. Yeah. So I was already comfortable with the people and it just like, oh, I'm going to hang out with my friend Michelle and mm -hmm. like we would have the best time together. So we kind of got into it together. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because that Krav Maga gym just started doing the grappling program. So it was almost like you already mm -hmm. knew all the faces. It yes. didn't feel quite as fresh or, or uh, daunting maybe. Yes. I, I yes. remember talking about like drinking not being a huge culture, piece of the culture of that gym or even most gyms um not that it's unheard of or anything but i i remember at our gym we uh there was a out of nowhere it just there was a ton of cigarette butts outside uh our front door patio area now we have the gym entrance and then we have a, an, another entrance to the upstairs and the other businesses in the building right yeah. next to us right so it's a common pathway and i remember someone I don't remember who it was, was like, um, you know, maybe this is you guys smoking all these cigarettes, you know, or like asked us, like, do you think it's us? You know, there was some sort of question yeah. if it was people in the gym just flicking their cigarette butts. Oh, I see. And I remember Andrew was just like, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> that's uh, nothing. Again, don't give a shit about smoking, but it's more so uh, there's very few people that smoke cigarettes actively right and then especially if you think about it they would either be they would have to be smoking a cigarette as they're walking into the gym <laughs> or like lighten one up on the way out which i guess i could understand more but yeah it was kind of a funny funny instance right because that a lot it's how when you get into those um cultures that that a lot of that stuff doesn't follow you know those un, unhealthier habits you know whether mm -hmm. it's nutritional or not that they don't exist oh mm. I mean, Henry's Donuts, I got a membership, right? Oh, well, yeah, I have, I have lots of confessions with my diet. Yeah. That's we'll not... talk about it later, okay. for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go over favorites. Yeah, it and... makes him, makes him ha really happy when I ta talk about oh, I'm sure. processed food that I love. Because he's all holier than thou. <laughs> Get on his high horse, Chris. Although, yeah. when I see this dude at breakfast after training, <laughs> and this guy's... <sighs> this guy would get kicked off YouTube. He devours these sandwiches so brutally you don't know how happy it made me to see the him eating the ice cream snickers i was like what uh, yeah it's like a novelty for me yeah. <laughs> it just oh, doesn't yeah. happen yeah this guy eats fries like a freaking animal well, i do too yeah. yeah well that's good though yeah. good technique <laughs> um okay so you had an interesting thing with switching gyms too Yes, and that's multiple where, times. Yeah, well, that's where maybe the nerves can kind of come in, they, right? Yes. Because you were comfortable. I was doing this martial art. They start bringing in grappling. You know a little bit about it. Easy transfer. But not as easy is going to a new gym. You're still a white belt. Absolutely. There's the self-conscious thing. I don't even know what I'm doing. Uh, but I know a little bit. Now there might be an expectation. How much do you know? <laughs> you know yeah. and then the new culture of the gyms they're oh, all they're yeah. all a little different all a little so. different a lot can be good and a lot can be bad especially if you don't know some of the red flags that you're looking at right or looking for um what was the first gym you switched to from right there? so my husband got a job at ford so mm -hmm. we moved to Detroit, Michigan oh, area. Oh, like corporate, like, yes. or whatever. Not yes. like a dealership that's in Colorado or South yeah. Virginia. He got hired as a, an engineer there to okay. work there. And I was not excited about the move anyway. Detroit's and, great, I hear. Well, I it actually is pretty cool. And the summers there are fantastic. Oh, I will sweet. give Michigan a little bit. Okay. I will okay. give them the, a little bit. The thing is. The winters are, the suck the soul out of you. So. Well, and she did her master's in geophysics. So that's not really known for no that that field is right it? right no so um a lot of things a lot of things happen <laughs> yeah. but basically i decided i i left what was i consider my family at mm -hmm. tech mma and it was really sad like we 
had a nice little party and dinner for me and it was it becomes your outlet right yeah and then yeah. like i move up to michigan and i have trouble finding a job of course with my niche field what year is this really uh 2015 okay so about a semester after i graduated mm -hmm. and um the oil market crash, which is typically what geophysicists do after mm -hmm. school. They go work for an oil company. I, like, uh, yeah, like a Shell or a Chevron, BP. Or BP. Okay. Yeah, I, I had a like a tentative offer lined up with this like company that processed earthquakes that would go off during fracking operations. I was very excited about it. And, then and the, you're like the one that studies all the yeah, facts. And, yeah, okay. so then I it, the market crashed, and I no longer had that offer, so I made – decided, okay, I guess I'm going to move up to Michigan. And mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I ended up in a job in construction materials testing, testing concrete, which is very different than what I did. Well, we should have Lawrence on. Yeah. Talk concrete for we hour. could. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> I tried to go, I found a gym there, um, Warrior Way Academy, super nice people. Like but, an MMA style gym? Um, they kind of they, they did Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu primarily. Okay. Um. So and exercise classes like sure. intense like Tabata or yeah, interval yeah. training style classes. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that, and then the construction job Lawrence would probably tell you gets very demanding, like thirteen, fourteen hour days. Yeah. And he sends me videos all the time. Yeah. You know? So there was that intimidation of the new culture, and then on top of that, not being consistent, and everyone's trying to be very encouraging to me, and. Mm -hmm. It just ended up being too much, and I parted ways with them because I got too overwhelmed, not because they weren't welcoming or anything like that. But it's then, a lot of change. And then the less I was consistent, the more that anxiety mounts, like, yeah. oh, I don't even really belong here. Right. So. And this is this yeah. pocket is supposed to be the thing that helps your anxiety. Yeah. You can get some of those stress relievers, but yeah. with all these things happening at one time, it's like, so then you're the, just a ball right yeah. so then that was like turned into like a four plus year break sweet <laughs> yeah those are more common than uh mm -hmm. than not really mm -hmm. i mean we, we mentioned it last time there's a blue belt that has been training for like 15 years you know but he had a big break in their life kids you know that it, yeah it happens but yeah um those those breaks are 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 legit that's for sure yeah i mean i know uh, previously mentioned Aurelius he he's he was a white belt I swear for like seven years and, well, then, I'm, and then a blue belt I got him beat let's yeah. see I'm yeah. uh, like nine or something crazy it's here good it's good but I mean the thing is once he st he, he started being because he had a job that kind of makes it difficult to be consistent at one gym so he would drop in a lot of places mm -hmm. but once he actually was able to kind of get his schedule right you know he progressed pretty quickly through those upper belts and now he's just you're like oh he's a really badass brown belt mm -hmm. <laughs> you know <Nice. laughs> so that there there can be kind of like a plus side to to that you know um okay so the break happens yes now we're getting to about 2019 yeah 20, and then yeah that so when you were training with us then yes the during the stop? summer of 2019 yeah, yeah so alex and i my husband mm -hmm. really wanted to live in colorado that was the end goal can we just call him dadushka <laughs> no, sure. sure i think that's a good name <laughs> nice. just dadushka. or babushka i mean that's yeah, babushka yeah. That's, that's pretty funny yeah, yeah. We, we can do that one it's better all right okay so babushka and you yeah <laughs> yeah good. yeah we well he stayed in michigan while he looked for a job and i decided in the my job was letting me work remotely so i took the opportunity to come be a leech on to my dad and yeah. my stepmom yeah i lived in this room this very um, room yep, right, this that we're room. doing this podcast in. and then i started training again and obviously the culture of your gym is just fantastic right. so it's kind of my new baseline of what i was looking for when i moved to colorado mm -hmm. and then we moved to colorado i found a gym um I think I started February 2020 and then a month later, mm -hmm. uh, Voldemort, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then it transitioned to Zoom classes and now everyone's kind of getting back in. It's been a while that we've been back in. Right. But, yeah. So, and I, just because you have experience now switching gyms a couple times, I think that is the prime time that people go on their four year break. They don't, yes. they try don't land on the first one that they try 
maybe they try a second one and then it's like, I just it's, a, it's a lot of mental energy to expel too. If you're, especially if you're introverted, it's just like, it's like mm-hmm. a, the new kid at school and you're like, Oh, like, and it's just so uncomfortable. That beginning of the journey, beginning, I say, as you're still a, a lower belt, you're yes. still newer, right? Yes. So you're still trying to get a grip on technique and let alone the social aspect. Um, it can, I think it can be definitely a little easier for maybe an upper belt that's a little bit more comfortable in their own knowledge. Well, at least they have their own routines established too. Like, oh, right. I go on this this day. I Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Um, so when you, now obviously the switch to Cascade Jiu-Jitsu was mm-hmm. probably, once again, a little easier because there's people that you know and yeah. stuff like that. But did yeah. you still have nerves? Um, yeah, and just... Because, like, you guys have, like, your really good friends, and I didn't want to be, like, the tag along who's, like, a freaking 30-year-old. So (laughs) I would just kind of be off in the corner observing, as I do. Mm -hmm. And, like, everyone was always super welcoming. I think I worked with Victoria a lot, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. she's awesome. And obviously all the the ladies, Olivia, Brittany, Amy, all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) They're all super welcoming, and it's really nice – when the girls, we start to develop friendships with the, the girls because then you kind of all have each other's back. Mm-hmm. So that that was something more prominent with Cascade, I noticed yeah. as well. How so. were you able to, or did you have any idea of how to get a little bit more ingrained with the females in the gym? Because that can be kind of difficult because sometimes some of the females, from just a distance, you're like, these are like hardened <laughs> chicks, you know, they're like, they're grappling super hard, you know, and like you, you see them sparring, you're like, they're, they're gonna like beat me up or something, or <laughs> or are they like super intense, right? So it can be a little daunting to to start to get to know them. It can, but I'll say at at my gym and Cascade, mm-hmm. oh, Sabrina too. Sorry, I didn't mean to leave you out. We don't talk about her. Out. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like everybody is so approachable when you're on the side of the mat. Mm-hmm. And they're just, they'll come talk to you if you're shy too. Yeah. That helps a lot. And I think that's, and the reason I bring that up is because I think it's good for people to hear that when there is new people, whether they're a white belt, a green belt, blue belt, whatever, if that's your home gym, like go up and talk to that person. Yeah. Because it can be fairly common where, it's, you know, I've experienced this because I drop into a lot of gyms is uh, at lower belts or, or upper is like you, you're just kind of sitting there in the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just waiting for the class to start. Yep. Okay. Everyone <laughs> sees me, I think. Pretending right? to stretch. And yeah. <laughs> and you're not stretching. You're nope. just trying not to like have bubble guts. Yeah. And then you're just kind of wondering, like, I feel like I'm here. I feel like people can see me, but no one's talking to me. And then you don't make eye contact with anybody. Yep. Yeah. And it's just turns into this whole thing. Maybe you smell. I don't know. Do I smell? <laughs> A little bit, but not bad, right? Yeah. Did I wash my gi? I did wash my gi. Mm-hmm. So you, you run into all those kind of odd things. But as soon as someone comes up and just like, hey, how's it going? You know? Yeah. It makes a world of difference. It really does. Way. Yeah. I started trying to do that too. Good. So. Yeah. That's, yeah. That is nice. When did you get your green belt? Um, This time last year. Really? Yeah. Wow. Have you been able to be consistent in this last year? Um, That's part of the problem okay yeah (laughs) what has caused the lack um residual of mental health things um it's just very the hardest part is getting myself out of the door like it is for everybody but i can very much get in my own head Mm. and deal with um chronic depression from all those years of things sure like of life (laughs) life (laughs) yeah life um having a dad like me Oh, well, I, I mean, can't live up to the, the. I can't live up to this. It's just not happening. Like, <laughs> I mean, no, that's it, not what I meant. I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> holy cow! Is it though? <laughs> that boy, that turned. I mean, <laughs> not in my favor. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's hilarious. I don't think you feel that way. I think I feel that way oh. only. Well, so. trust me. We put those pictures up. This guy was like, "Well, how about you put the pictures behind me?" And he wanted to put his diplomas up. So this is a complete fabrication, by the way. Yeah. I'm- yeah. <laughs> fact of uh, the fact checkers are going to come get him. Can you believe that? Mm. I, I sound, know, you sounds keep, like him. Yeah, I knew it. I knew <laughs> it. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Look at he's looking into darkness. I cannot right believe you, Anna. <laughs> no, I rolled my eyes. The camera, you'll see it in the video. <laughs> don't worry. There was sarcasm. We don't have just one 
person shaking their head. Yep, that's right. We have another piece of kin <laughs> off camera that is also uh, saying, oh, yeah, that sounds like him. It's okay. Don't worry about I guess it. You guys are monsters. So, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to have to have a whole segment on that. I was really a good dad, I promise. No, uh, no, he definitely was. He definitely was. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so with that, I mean, if that kind of falls into some of the stuff we talked about before where, like, <clears throat> jiu-jitsu can be so helpful, but it is a stressor, right? Yeah. It is a stress on the mind and on the body. Well, and if I feel like I have anything else going on, like, oh, I, if nothing, if things aren't perfect right before class, then I can very easily con convince myself not to go. You'll find a like reason. A slightly sore. I didn't eat the right lunch. I... I like I went out of town and now I'm tired like just all I can make myself like any excuse oh and for sure it's really annoying I think I, Olivia I mean I'd say you kind of sympathize with that right yep <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean we've I wouldn't say battled with that but it's like having the consistency to kind of even though you don't feel maybe a hundred percent or because sometimes that's what we look for Yes. I need to feel like I got a pump the ideal, already. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, you're mentally prepared to work out or even socialize. I mean, that yeah. could be something yeah. for Olivia. Is Oh, yeah. I have moments where I, I'm just like, I just am not in the mood to, yeah. I can relate. Talk to anybody yeah. in my social Yeah. And we're going around well. friends. Yeah. But. Yeah. It's, well, it's an introverted thing. Yeah. Too. Yeah. But. I mean, I, I go down the same road, I think, Chris, a little bit also when it comes to tournaments. Mm. It is Maybe I don't have that as much like just coming to class because uh, I wouldn't be classified as an introvert as much. But <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, the tournament side is like, I, if I got a hangnail, probably not going to be able to do the tournament. <laughs> I mean, it's just is what it is. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, just like this last tournament. You know, there I had a couple nagging little injuries, uh, and then the tournament filled up, and I was like, "Oh, geez, yeah, darn it, <laughs> you dang it." <laughs> yeah. Well, then, like, I don't know if this is this way for you, but then I have like the the shame circle, oh. the vicious circle, and I feel ashamed of myself, and then now I'm the too whirlpool. upset to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you then you beat yourself up, and you're like, "I'm so fat and dumb and ugly and stupid." Yeah, I'm really good at that. Oh, I don't. Yeah, professional. Yeah. Right here for sure yeah. and um it, chris what do you think and maybe this isn't in your wheelhouse maybe it is but what is that why do we we talk ourselves out of something that we know we will be good for us like it's stereotypical but you never don't feel like going to either work out or jujitsu and then you go you, you talked yourself into it you went and then you leave and you're like i always feel shitty. happier right yeah i don't yes what is that that we re reward, quote unquote, ourselves with beating ourselves up after we just talked ourselves out of going? Yeah, it's, what, a, what is it's a pattern of self-sabotage um, generally where and gosh, I've struggled with it most of my life. But then I've what I've done is gone psychotic the other way. Mm. I am a huge bully to myself, like a perfect example. Monday, we had an open mat. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you know, Anna and my mom just got into town. I was pretty tired. Anna was tired and she's already taught. I'm just going to say, was, Anna no, was already it. like, oh, you know, I, I don't know. I think I'm just going to sit this one out. Well, I was obsessing because and I'm like, I need at least four hours before I train after I eat. And I've only had two and this yeah. is not going to be good. <laughs> <I'm with laughs> like, well, what was funny is then I was like, you know what? That's a good point. I was, and I was like, man, I could just really sit here on the couch and, you know, watch some guitar stuff on YouTube. And, man, that's it. And then I was like, no, you piece of shit. That was in my head. I <laughs> just was like, for thinking it. just for thinking it, I'm definitely going. I don't care what anyone else does. I'm like, upset. I'm going to go. Yeah. And then he gently suggested to me, well, maybe you'll feel better if you go. He's so nice to me and yeah. so mean to himself. But, <laughs> but I we got to, we got to, admit though after i felt great i felt better too like yeah. my grogginess was gone i didn't do much but i did, did but i think bit. that was the point right is like because i remember we, we were gonna spar and you were like oh, I, you know i actually did just i literally ate right before and so i'm just drilling yeah just the drilling and just 
conversating and like BSing really a little bit and just moving around. We kind of went through the motions for the most part. Yeah. And you leave, you got training in, like you said, you're going to do a week ago. Yeah. You're like, when I get there the first day, I'm going to get some training in. Yeah. So you were able to maintain that. And then you got the benefits of the social side and all that moving around, probably digested the food better too. <laughs> probably. Yeah. yeah. But, but to your earlier, excuse me, earlier question. Vodka. I just play. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I had to resort to being a self bully. Mm -hmm. Right. But that got me into a rhythm mm -hmm. where then it just started feeding on itself. Consistency is its own reward, mm -hmm. right? Going, I, I mean, I don't go as much as <clears throat> some people because um, I can't physically, but I mean, you're ancient. Should, should we say the three letter word? Three letter. Old? Old. Oh. <laughs> you got to be careful. My mom, <laughs> my mom just growled at you. That's true. But if we can all put it on the table. And she will whip your ass for sure. Everyone thinks that you are her dad. <laughs> From the neck up, you are just you just look a little more aged. I think you called me a catcher's myth the other day. At the academy. A, at the lightly, a lightly, lightly oiled catcher's myth. So. <laughs> oh, man. But I'm not saying like in a mean way i'm just saying like a catcher's mitt from the 90s that's made its way all the way to 2022 <laughs> in a cold garage <laughs> and very stuffed in a box somewhere right. it's been Couple wrapped creases never hurt anybody yeah mm -hmm. leathery texture right see i'm i'm not certain i'm so much of a self bully already uh, i'm not certain that would be as effective for me i'd well, be like you're right i am a piece of shit i'm just gonna go cry <laughs> like, <laughs> but well, i guess what my point was whatever motivates me once i am going three days a week and i'm seeing the benefits of it my mood and everything else because i can my family members will tell you i've been running hot as far as my reactivity to like world events and oh yeah the nonsense that's oh, been going yeah. on for the past couple of years and yeah. um this has really saved my mental health because as soon as i come back from training i feel a ton better mm -hmm. so but that has its own snowball effect in a good way where then you're you're acquiring more skill you just feel like you're even if you're not progressing quickly which i don't think any of us do real i mean it's it's kind of a grind but i feel like it's an accomplishment just getting out of the house when i don't want to yeah and doing that and how far is your academy from your house oh gosh go ahead tell me two miles two miles weird <laughs> i mean i drive <laughs> honestly though that can be harder sometimes yes yeah, so he can talk to that because I live about 30 minutes away. How, how close do you live? Yeah. I mean, if I get a couple a green, minutes, if I get a green light, it's four minutes. Mm -hmm. If, if I right. hit the, if the two lights are red seven, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, tell me about that a little bit. So oddly in this, we are perpetually late for darn near everything that is nearby. Mm -hmm. But if it's in Bellevue, which is if there's no traffic 30 minutes away, if there's normal daily traffic it's an hour and a half mm -hmm. but when it's something that's close like we're going to go to andrew's house or something uh we will be late <laughs> it is guaranteed i know everyone that knows us just chalks it up as like they will be late right um we talk a lot of shit <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's one of those things where when something's close like that you you always think well i got five more minutes or something like that yeah it's, you think of the best case scenario okay if i hit zero lights i speed a little bit maybe i jump a curb it'll take me three <laughs> minutes to get to freaking the gym right and then it starts you're you're a little bit behind now and you realize oh dang it i'm gonna be late well, maybe I won't go. I used to play that card. And then my professor one time was like, it's okay if you're a little late, just show up. And yeah. I was like, darn, I can't use that excuse anymore. <laughs> I wonder, I'm going to have to ask, because I had a couple guys actually ask me recently about the midday class. They said, hey, how late can I come? <laughs> like, you know, is it cool? And I said, uh, I was like, I don't care if you come in the last 10 minutes. Like, just come on because we spar after class um just i would rather you show up and then not 
Right. So I'm wondering if in their head they were like, damn. <laughs> well, and like the way I'm talking about it, it sounds like, well, maybe you just don't like it. And I've had those conversations with myself too. Like, well, what what if I just don't like it as much? But then mm-hmm. um, I think about it when I'm not there. I have so much fun when I am there. I feel great right. after. So I'm like, okay, I know I like this. Yeah. I think it's just other things going on. Olivia, you've had that yeah. same thing, right? Oh, yeah. Like questioning. Because like yeah. most people get the bug and they're like hooked and I'm like, why can't I be, why don't I have that yeah. passion? But then, Same. but yeah, but then I'm like, well, I guess I don't really have that passion with anything. Mm. Thanks, depression. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So yeah, it's getting, I mean, it's getting better. Sure. I'm, I'm fine, but you know. I will say even people that appear to be super obsessed, unwavering commitment, I would say i People look at me probably that way. Oh, I was looking at you, Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I get most jealous of is not really the skills. It's people's commitment. I'm right. Like, Man. And like the enjoyment level or yeah. whatever. It's yeah. like, how are they that can say? It just seems like they love being here. Well, spoiler alert. Like I go through the very similar things. I think oh, for whatever reason, I, I really can't say what, this or that. I, I was able to create that consistency for a certain period of time that it built a habit to where I'll still debate at my house, like, am I going to go? Am I? I don't really feel like going. I I know I'll enjoy myself, but I'm talking, I'm trying to find every reason. We have conversations about that, how he, he literally does actually probably almost every class like kind of have those debates don't you i wouldn't say every class but i would weekly for for sure i i i do it and the so there was a point earlier on in my uh, little journey that i I heard jocko wheeling say it and i know Mm -hmm. i've said this before but is i'm gonna uh, okay i'll take that break but just not today i'm i'm gonna go today even though I'm not really feeling it or maybe whatever I, I ate or, you know, yeah. cause I'm like you, if I eat four out within four hours before doing anything. Yeah. I'm the same. I'm like, I don't, no. nausea is like the worst thing for me oh, ever. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, to me, you I know just, what? Yeah. When, you know, Jupiter or Venus are in certain places in the sky, you know, it could be a lot of things, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no. <laughs> and I, I tried to, Make a little comment, and I was like, "Yeah." Oh, I got distracted, but oh, well. <laughs> I had a snarky astrology comment too. Yeah. It was like, yeah. <laughs> okay, drop your your. What was your joke? I, no, it's already. Are you sure? Yeah, oh yeah, it's okay. you related don't wanna... to the meme of saying like that. I need a white girl with a nose ring to tell me why I'm upset or like what planets are misaligned. Which is, I mean, I'm irony's just, not lost on me. It's just excuses. <laughs> and you have a nice astrology joke. Well, no, that that was in response to oh, his it. joke, like if Jupiter and Venus aren't in the right orbit, mm. whatever. I can't go so. to class. Yeah. yeah, I mean, definitely. I look it through my telescope every day. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, but peeping on your neighbors is not a good thing, Bill. Well, that's up to me to decide, <laughs> not you, buddy. Um, yeah, that that anxiety, it, it, even to someone that appears like they got it all together. Now, I'm sure there's some people that, yeah, they're just rocking. But, man, I struggle with that still. And I would say, I think the first time I really gave in was recently where I was like, I'm not going to go. I'm just, I'm just not going to go. I mm-hmm. just don't feel like it, you know? And uh, and I didn't go. Definitely beat myself up. Yep. I was like whipping myself in the shower. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, dad. <laughs> I was taking direction. Oh, okay. Just need to see your face a little bit better. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hello. Um, and yeah, I did whip myself a little bit and like beat myself up. But then I also, because I told Olivia in that moment, and she was like, that's good. It's a good thing to do every once in a while, you know? Yeah. Now, what's the habit? You know, do I start spiraling and... <laughs> you know, giving into those feelings I'm more. A, I'm a spiraler for it's sure. It's real easy. Yeah. But fortunately I didn't. And, but it took a lot of talking to. It's like, well, maybe I'll just another day without training, you know? Yeah. 
Well, he won't get away with it at this point because no. we'll put his face on a milk carton That's and true. send it to him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We will have the peer pressure come in and be like, hey. Well, I was yeah. going to say that's something that's also helped me recently. I've started to get to know some of the people at my gym a bit better. And mm. they'll text me. They'll text me and say, hey, are you going today? I'd love to work with you, like that kind of stuff. And that helps getting so that much. little text, I'm like, okay, I can I can be good for this other person, if not for myself. Totally. Like I can show up for them. So that's been helpful. So that's, I think that helps a lot. I know that's helped Olivia before too. It's like, okay, Brittany's going, so I'll. I'll well, and then it leave. feels like you're part of it. Like, oh, they want me there. Okay, yeah, cool. it's like a confidence. Boost. <laughs> yeah, like, people care about me. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. I could just die in here, and no one would care. About me. <laughs> oh, Whatever. Geez. Maybe two weeks later, someone will find my body. Like it's the movie Seven. So <laughs> face in a bowl of cereal. <laughs> What a good visual. I mean, <laughs> was it cereal or SpaghettiOs? Uh, I think it was spaghetti. Okay. It was spaghetti. It was gluttony. Yeah, because he was making them eat so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was weird. But uh, I, I also found that like with the consistency thing, it is is telling yourself, you know, not today. Like that that that'll help for sure. Um, but something that helps motivate me is like I I get freaked out that uh everyone else is getting better oh yeah and that motivates me to go too because and i think that could be healthy mm -hmm. you can also make it be unhealthy <laughs> <laughs> olivia what why are you looking at me just called her out how dare you well it starts to get really <laughs> shameful as a green belt when you've met you've introduced yourself to a brand new white belt and they're already a stripe ahead of you in green belt now sure. you're like, oh oh no sure like, <laughs> that can totally happen yeah and, it's and, happened a lot in so. it's kind of a part of it and that's where people give you the whole like well everyone's journey is their own and stuff like that well which, and they 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 are consistent and that's the difference really yeah it, and we've talked about me progressing quickly but all it is it's a it's not a timeline thing as in years or weeks or months. Mm -hmm. It's a mat time thing. He had to explain that to me because I mm -hmm. have a lot of shame. I'm like, oh, I've been training for X amount of years. And he said, yeah, but how much of that has been on the mats realistically? And that's all it is. That helps. Yeah. So I mean, it's difficult for someone like Chris. He's had a lot of mat time, <laughs> but it's not really transferring. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but. That's just his journey. Well, tonight's class is going to be interesting. <laughs> we might go to war. I'm going to go after you, my friend. And I'm yeah. not playing guard this I time. Know, Put it dear. that way. Well, all right. every old guy's got to have his day, you know. <laughs> but um, getting caught up in that definitely is can be like cancerous, right? Where you're like. That person's now ranked ahead of me or something the like that. The comparison thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a. Yeah. That's an easy one to fall into. Yeah. Right. I, I think it, I've been on the other side, so it's like, but I still do understand the difficulty in that, you know, especially because you can have that, those feelings like if someone else gets promoted and you don't, or you, know, you let that demon in there to start chirping away. Yeah. You know, that, that can be difficult. Um, yep. What would you say your, uh, most memorable moment within jiu-jitsu is? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be getting that green belt. It could be getting that first stripe. I Sometimes would say the green good. belt because, mm -hmm. like, I finally felt, like, a little at home again mm -hmm. in a new gym. and Because you got it at Jibera. Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, I just I felt, like, really welcomed by everybody at this gym. So I knew I was going to stay long term. And then getting that was, like, even though it's maybe slower than people would typically get their green belt mm -hmm. and now even staying at green belt for as long as I have just getting that meant so much to me. Like I yeah. did the whole like long sappy Facebook post, about how thankful and grateful I was. Yeah. So yeah, just that. And I got a nice picture with my professor. So, mm -hmm. and then probably um, on the same level as that is just getting to watch my dad and stepmom's progression Mm. and just seeing like this community for them be so special to them and it yeah. gives me all the warm fuzzies too like sure. see them have this great group of friends and mm -hmm. so yeah and training with my parents like that's also very memorable and i fun. could see that be 
Yeah, it's cool. cool. Well, I I brag about them at my gym. I'm like, my parents are brown belts, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, are you looking forward to the next progression or the next promotion, which would be that the blue belt? The blue belt. Um, I would. I mean, of course, everyone always looks forward to it. I I know. Realistically, I still have a ways to go to get there. Sure. Um, and I sort of feel like it wouldn't be, well, I guess we'll see how I feel when I get there, but like some of the blue belt blues people talk about and the stagnancy, I feel like I've already felt that so much. It'll be yeah a familiar thing for me. Do you, do you so. look at blue belt as some, cause some people do look at blue belt as almost like a finish line as something like, okay, this is a, a monumental piece here. Um, it, I'll feel like if I stop doing it, I'm fine because oh, I, I got that. I'm not planning on stopping. Mm -hmm. I'm planning on, I mean, at this point, I'm starting to have some acceptance and grace for myself and where I'm at in my life and my yeah. consistency. And it's always there for me. Everyone's super nice and supportive. So, I mean, I would eventually like to get to Black Belt. Maybe I'll be 50. I don't know. Sure. But, hey. yeah. It's not a problem. <laughs> no, it's not. No, because no. I'm over 50, if you yeah. remember. I mean, I, at this point, I don't care how long it takes as right. much outside of the... Right. If I'm having a bad day, I get to the shame spiral again. But Sure. Um, yeah, no, I I think it's like a lifelong... And you'll have those at Brown Belt. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. You go home so. saying you suck and all this. And... Yep. Yeah. No, I, I'm planning on it being... For foreseeable future mm -hmm. so would you say that i mean let me pause for a second so i think your current kind of path it it might not feel like it but it's going to be super beneficial for other people as well as yourself because you you have obviously different journeys right you have mine and then you have chris's you have yours carrie's olivia's yeah. and Yours is unique out of all of ours, right? And it's, but you're gonna run across some people in your timeline that are gonna be that fresh white belt, or they're gonna be a green belt. Yeah. And you're gonna be a purple belt, and they're gonna be looking to you, right? And they're gonna say, like, they're gonna be struggling with certain things. They just switched gyms, and you're gonna be like, you know what? I was a white belt for however many Ten years. Ten years, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I get it. You and know, then it would be worth it too, just to make someone else feel better. Holy so smokes! That, but yeah. When you can, like, I have that when it comes to like my my alcohol abuse. Like, I can. Uh, I don't drink anymore, but mm -hmm. like, there was a time. <laughs> so yeah. When someone's struggling with that, like, I can. I I can speak on it, and they can trust that. Like, I I know <laughs> what it's like to hide something from people you love yeah and um and to be in that spiral of i'm doing something i do not want to do yeah and then i beat the hell out of myself for doing it and then i do it again the next day yeah <laughs> like yeah well i'm familiar with that cycle too like. right because that, that's not just like a substance abuse thing. That can just be a depression thing. Mm -hmm. Depression thing and mm -hmm. just like sugar abuse. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh but you're speaking his language Lord there. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. Let's talk about that sugar. All right. Is that your... Uh, is that your... Yeah. Well, if you don't drink and you don't do drugs, so what's left? <laughs> I mean, Processed sugar. food and glu yeah, glucose, yeah. sugar. Yeah. yeah, give me all the glucose. Yeah. Shoot it into my veins. What's your go-to? Coke. Coca-Cola. Full body, right? Coke, oh, yeah. We're not about. <laughs> she goes, I can do a couple lines. <laughs> you thought I was talking about that that grain sugar. I was talking about that powdery yeah. sugar. Not soda. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're a Coca Cola gal. I'm a Pepsi kind of fella. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was because of something that happened in elementary school, but it's okay. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> What about candy? Are you a pastry, a candy, a cake? Um, I mean, yeah, those are good. Just, I'm I'm a big like savory person with the soda. That's the ultimate like fries, mean? like salt oh, fries, okay. like yeah, mixing them up. Yeah. Go to fries. Who do you got? Five guys. Respect. <laughs> Respect. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I, I like and, and I like that they will just dump them in the bag. 
Do they still do that? Oh, they do. Okay. And it's the, yeah, it's the ultimate symbol of being a piece of shit. I'm going to go with my greasy bag of, there's fries in the bag. Yeah, like, it's almost falling through the bottom. Yeah. And it's like your flag of like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And then my husband's like, I call him. Put him on blast. I call him Fittler sometimes because he shames me for my poor eating choices. What a jerk. <laughs> he would appreciate Alex doing that because he's just like, you're going to get fries. <sighs> <laughs> there is so many I'm so people. much better than you now. <laughs> <laughs> what does he get? Uh, well, he cracks out with me occasionally, yeah, but he does. he's a he's one of those like. I'll eat what we have at the house and then he'll make like oh, a black guy. beans and like tuna packet and he'll just eat that and like it's awesome. Russian. Yeah. Uh, well, that's immigrant. Right yeah, there. yeah, that's, yeah. So they're he's frugal. like frugal. They're like, I got a potato at home I can peel. Yeah. <laughs> so and then I'm the the spoiled American that will go out because yeah. I want it. Yeah. Not yeah. We just went grocery shopping yesterday, but you're like Panda Express sounds pretty freaking good, right? <laughs> Yeah, Give me so that double orange. No, he's it's a good balance to have because Keeps you in the, check the a little shame bit. a little bit like you were kind of alluding to with the the fat shaming of friends. It, oh yeah, the the shame I, I hate it, but it does stop me. Yeah, I there the fat shaming thing I I did catch a little bit of. I kind of thought it that. weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, so non controversial. I did get some supporters. Thank you to the two of you. Um, so my thing with that is I think it has to come from the right place if it's going to be effective. Like I can't walk in the grocery aisle with some T-bones and looking fit and then like see someone with Oreos and be like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not okay. Like, that's, that's probably not going to work. No. They're going to go get the double stuffs in a second bag <laughs> because of me. Um, but well, and it's, it's also unsolicited, right? Too, and even worse whole... than that is hypocritical because he was a big fatty, <laughs> right? Oh, I wouldn't have. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He's How much did shit. you? You weighed like two thirty. Yeah. Okay. So, and you're what? Seventy five ish. Mm, yeah, one seventy five now. Yeah. So yeah, he was in tub- my head. He was tubby. Oh uh, well, I yeah. speak from experience there too. <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Well, and so. Okay, I wouldn't have steaks in my bag. I would probably have sliced cake from the grocery store. You still do. Yes, I know, Olivia. I'm like your your husband, and Bill's like, why are you going to comment on my food? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. She shames me mm-hmm. because it'll be like 9 o'clock at night. We just did jiu-jitsu. And yeah, I'm like, he's drinking a freaking Pepsi with some a bowl of ice cream. Well, see, Pepsi with that's, ice cream. That's, that's, oh, my, com- that's my combo. Oh, nice. I go big ice cream bowl. So this is okay. Can we'll just, feed your activity from someone's. That's what I'm saying. Book. Like book, yeah. Thank so. you. <laughs> no, that's not it. Nope. You don't. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you were getting all set. You were about yeah. to say something. Well, I was gonna say the go-to combo mm. is people know I like to mix my pints of ice cream. Now, typically, I do, you know, like a Ben and Jerry's pint. Oh yeah. Yeah. Half baked. Right. Of course, solid. Mm-hmm. I I do one of those. And then I do a different kind. I put them into a bowl. And then I do chocolate syrup. It Now, I, I, I tipped people before. But just so they know, if it's if that ice cream is really hard, 15 seconds in the microwave. Okay. Do yourself a favor. Don't break your wrist trying to scoop that stuff. Okay? <laughs> then you, you, you put both pints in there. Drizzle heavily, please. And then... Uh, and then I do a 20 ounce Pepsi after. Wow. At 9 30 at night. In bed. So you're not Why lactose. Why you gotta and... call me out like that? <laughs> I, I eat in my bed too. It drives Alex crazy. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't always eat in bed, but sometimes. If, well, it's usually because I'm like, I wanna go to bed, and he's like, fine. I'm and like, all she hears is like the, the... <laughs> the scooping of the ice cream in the, in the bowl. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's because I force him into the bed. And then, then like the, the, wow. the carbonation from the Pepsi <laughs> oh, is a little the rough. The carbonation is what gets me too. Yeah. Yeah. And like she'll like she knows I'm getting close to finishing because she's already trying to sleep and she hears the the like last little scrape of the bo- and then mm. she hears me take that first swig of the like fresh Pepsi and she hears because <laughs> 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 it's 
too carbonated. Like my system yeah. isn't ready. But I'm like a heroin addict. Like I'm looking for that. Yeah. Like you know when an alcoholic like wants that burn in the throat. Well, like, the burn in the throat from carbonation is very satisfying. Right. You're, but you're sitting there like, and I love it. No, well, not not me. I'm oh. I've I've gotten used to. Oh, really? You don't yeah. get that anymore? No. Well. That's an She's experienced hardcore. esophagus right there. Well, I, I have a soda stream now, so all my water is. Uh-oh. Uh, are you okay? Maybe. Are we'll see. Right? We'll see. Just took a swig of that fresh Pepsi, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> That's what I sound like in bed right there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're like, you're seasoned right now because you got a soda streamer. You're just going ham on soda or carbonated. Uh, yeah. 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 So. That's good. Experience esophagus is a good thing to have. <laughs> um so yeah that is my go-to and sometimes it is in bed that i eat that (laughs) so that tells me that you are not lactose intolerant because i think i would be sick for a week if i oh no he is unfortunately i am oh how do you fairly severely too how lactate he destroys toilets oh no that's what i heard stay out of my personal life (laughs) so there is uh, some digestive enzyme that I take. You do take lactate. We bought it recently. <laughs> yeah. I, I, sometimes I'll, I'll... Sometimes you need it. Yep. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll hit that up. Um, or, or you'll buy dairy-free sometimes. Which I would say that... Uh, yes, sometimes. And then uh, that, I would say, lessens the pain part. It's still bubbly. Mm-hmm. It's still a little bit of volcano Yeah. But the pain isn't quite as bad. Because sometimes what happens is about 2 in the morning is... It's like, I'm not saying it's Montezuma's revenge, but I feel like I have stomach cancer. Yeah. And the tumor's growing. That's why I broke up with gelato. See, some asshole told me that gelato isn't dairy or la 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 la. So I just started going ham on gelato. No, that's a mistake. And I found out that we don't have real gelato. We have soft serve ice cream. Yeah. It's called gelato. Yeah. Still tastes good, though. It does. It does. And you know what the thing with gelato, if I could just say, please? Mm -hmm. The visual representation in whatever those clear containers are is so good. Well, it's classy. Yeah. You don't feel bad about yourself. Yeah, and they're stacking, like, brownie crumbs, chocolate Mm -hmm. syrup. It's like a parfait. Are you kidding me? You expect me to walk by that and not buy it? They're lucky I don't pop the lid off and eat it in the freaking aisle. (laughs) So good looking. Um, yeah. What's wrong with you? I was gonna say, <clears throat> recently, last weekend, we were at the Revolution BJJ tournament coaching. This is embarrassing. And they have inside the facility this place that makes these scones, delicious scones. Like, you can see the lady back there kneading the dough. Wow. With the jelly and all that. Mm-hmm. How many did you get? It's embarrassing. I only had four. Yeah, that's kind of light for you. I had How a, big are they? Not that big. Like I, okay. I had a goal, a personal goal, to at least eat 10. And I only got to four. I will say, this one shamed I, me. I did shame you for going back for two. <laughs> I, I get two. I'm just warming up, right? I'm just wetting the whistle. They don't even bit. count. They're, literally. <laughs> Thank you. Those are, yeah. And then I, I only eat one because we we're coaching and it was like, oh, I'm running around and uh, I'm stuffing my face as I'm like walking I through people. I think what you thought was one was actually two and you <laughs> thought it was one. <laughs> Innocent mistake. So I cannot confirm or deny that. But so I eat that one and then uh, we're about to leave and I'm like, hey, I, I haven't eaten all day. I need more. And she is like, are you serious? I'm like, it's freaking five seconds. I can just go over there. And she scoffs at me. But preceding that, he said, I haven't eaten all day. Yeah. Which is completely not true. How so? You you had it. You already had scones. They don't count. <laughs> yeah. They didn't count. Okay. So <laughs> I wanted to go and order my eight scones right there. And she shames me and says, here's $5. You can get two. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Chris did try to help and get you more scones. I he did. did offer money. I, I did. I offered her money. Yeah. Enabler. Mm. Good enabler, though. <laughs> Trying to help you out. And I appreciate that. Mm. You didn't help shit. <laughs> you let me eat two on the way home. Mm. Anyways, 
I it was had disappointing. One and I gave you one of mine. Scone gate. Yeah, scone gate. And then I got <laughs> shamed by some ginger on Facebook saying that's weak sauce. Mm. Who might that be? I don't know. <laughs> Transient. But <laughs> yeah, he just. I got shamed. I got shamed for not eating enough scones. He may or right. may not own a jujitsu academy. I don't know. Okay. Well, and then there was the, the cupcake video that are, you already got some traction about. Yeah, that yeah. was good. Yeah. Uh, there has been a challenge wa- waged, which is if I could do it. May I tell you about a challenge in our friend group that got out of control? Yes, please. So <laughs> Alex and I, even though he does shame me, we throw down every once in a while together. A kid. We started this tradition called trash giving. It's the day after Thanksgiving. We get whatever fast food we wanted. Oh, like goodness. Chick-fil-A sandwich, Outback cheese fries, like all of them together. Like and at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Trash giving. We're calling this Alex a feast. Alex decided he was going to get McDonald's for his trash giving, and he calls it. It, it turned into a challenge after he ate three Big Macs and a fry. Holy smokes. And then all of our friends decided unwisingly that they were going to attempt to eat three big macs <laughs> that's that's, that's it's a lot, a lot. it's a lot of food it tastes good but it's a lot of food and uh it didn't end well and somehow everybody got sick i don't know really <laughs> three big macs so yeah it, was, <laughs> it got out of hand did they get sick in front of each other no this was all in their own houses oh, okay. they just felt and really bad last year we tried to do a trash giving all together mm-hmm. and we said okay i think it's canceled indefinitely because it was just too much everyone got scarred yeah well yeah. i'd say your hubby babush babushka won he did he set the tone he could throw down people tried following and yeah. he laughed at him yeah <clears throat> and he maintains like a good he has a good metabolism yeah so. It's highly upsetting. <laughs> yeah, eat potatoes. That's it. <laughs> Frugal guy. A little bit of borscht here or there. Does he make borscht for you? No. Well, I won't. I won't. Eat you it. what he does eat? Kefir. Yes. Kefir's and there nope. are way more pickled things in our house than I would like. <laughs> pickled and just uh, yeah fermented. fermented. It's P- the worst. Pickled bananas. Well, pickled radishes was the biggest <clears throat> offense. Mm. So yeah. why don't you like borscht? I, I'm just picky. Oh, okay. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Not enough sugar. <laughs> Cold in soup also is like. Mm. Yeah. We had ours hot. Yeah. It was served oh. hot and they uh, had sour cream, which was really good. But I think that's normal. So eating cream. a whole clove of or, uh, actual piece of garlic was intense and we, very Oh, that. Hot. Yeah. They make another dish called plof. Um, I'm probably butchering it, but it's like rice and mm. lamb and garlic cloves, onion. Yep. I do eat that. I was sabotaged again, actually, by our little Russian bot when he had us eat this authentic borscht, which was very good, by his mom. And uh, he, they laid out the uh, the garlic cloves, the full size ones, threw a bunch of sour cream in there. It was great. It tasted really good, but he didn't say hey, take a bite out of the clove. Don't Did you, you eat a whole clove? Oh, I put that sucker right on oh my tongue. Oh my gosh, Bill! Yeah, started chomping away. Uh, I've never had a clove of garlic before. It crushed me. That's a one and done. You know what? I powered through. (laughs) I I started eating the soup to try to lessen the heat of it. And then uh, I was like, okay, this is good. And then I just started nibbling on him from that point on. And Mm -hmm. then he comes walking. I was like, yeah, you don't have to eat the whole thing. He's like, yeah. Nice timing, asshole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm swearing a lot today. I'm sorry. (laughs) That's fine. It's okay. It's all good. Um, we are not talking about jujitsu anymore. Yeah, we got a little food Oof, tangent going. Full foodie. You guys got very excited about that, so yeah. I just wanted to let it go. It's okay. Yeah. You're sweating. Um, <laughs> so with your jujitsu journey, if we can come back to it, please. Yes. Yes. What are your goals in jujitsu? Like, what do you want from it? I. Does it change? And that could change. Um. I would like to have overall maintain and get better wellness, like Mm. body composition. It kind of comes naturally with that because it forces to change your eating lifestyle as well. Yeah, because it's almost motivational, right? Like if I eat crappy at lunch, at jiu-jitsu, I'm going to feel crappy. Yeah, 
Yeah. So maybe I won't eat. A lot of a lot of food rules when I'm training that mm -hmm. day. Um, so there's that part, just like the that's probably top, just something that keeps me healthy and yeah. well, Are strong. You, maybe you're like me, but like lifting weights or running mm -hmm. is a form of suicide. I hate running. It's brutal. Yeah. I, I just I'm so bored. I dabble in weights. Um that's, that's definitely better than running. That's, that's sure. fine. Yeah, I, I won't run. Like yeah. I hike, but mm -hmm. and then just um, let's see. What if, I don't know if I've thought of any specific goals mm -hmm. that I want from it. You just know you want to continue doing. I it. want it to be part of my life, and then obviously there's the safety aspect. Sure. Like I want to be able to handle myself in case I come across somebody. Mm -hmm. Someone easier so. clapped up. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Um. With what what would you say if I mean you're a green belt right now? Yes. So you are firmly past the white belt, never going back. What would you tell 2015, Anna? I would tell her a lot of things. <laughs> um, just patience and have grace with yourself. Just like be nice to yourself, be nicer mm -hmm. to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, try not to compare. Mm. to other people i know everybody says that but sure. um it really just doesn't i learned in therapy it doesn't serve you mm -hmm. it's not productive thought and in like all aspects of life right y yeah yeah it's validating to feel that way because it's so common but um it doesn't serve you it doesn't help things and yeah um just curb that self-bully a little bit even mm -hmm. just tell it to go to hell i'm doing this anyway and mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, that would probably be the main just like patience be nice to yourself <laughs> right the patience thing is big right yes it's, we want to be so like we want to be good immediately yes and i complain about that a lot to alex and my dad like i'm never i just feel like i haven't found something i'm naturally good at like i'm not good at anything mm -hmm. or i guess i'm not great at anything i just want to be great at something yeah so and I, then i want it like right now yeah, so, of course. I know Olivia had had and it, you're much better about this, but you wanted you, that was one of the reasons why you almost struggled to continue going was because you wanted to do be good. Yeah. Yeah. The right. learning curve is just so frustrating, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. I forgot who it was that said this, but you don't see your hair growing. Right. But you definitely right. don't. <laughs> He's back with a vengeance. The silence should be deafening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to oil check you later. It's done. That's a problem. you darn right it is, buddy. And it's not going to be one thing here. No, I, maybe you're thinking of like... The, <laughs> please, please continue. I'm the, sorry. The example of like working out, like when you go to the gym one day you're not going to notice a difference yeah. and it's the cumulative. Well, yeah. my mm -hmm. professor says just focus on getting 1% better. Yeah. So every day yeah. you can just 1% and it, and it it does go you're not going to notice 1%, right? Right. You're not but if you did the work to do it, well, it accumulates. I, I guess at this point my day-to-day -day goal would be the showing up in itself is the feat. So if I showed up, I did my job for the day for yes. now yes. until that becomes a habit. If you show up, you're yeah. probably going to get 1% better. Right. Just by showing up, just by attending class, just like Friday when I didn't spar a whole lot, but I drilled a bit. We talked about side control escapes. Yeah. Just talking about it. Like we're, that's a rep mental repetition, you know? Yeah. Thinking through. You got better. We all got better that day. Maybe it's not a huge jump, but we definitely, we didn't learn something brand new maybe or whatever, but we yeah. absolutely got a little bit better just by showing up. Yeah. And it's more than the other person that didn't show up. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Right. So. Um, or for me, it's more than the version of myself that got five guys in 
watched Real Housewives of New York. Oh. Day. I love Real Housewives of New York. <laughs> it's that my... is my favorite one. Why have they not had it on? I, they're I changing know. their whole I thing. Know. You the heard about that. Thing yeah. Whatever. I know. Yeah. I'm like, can we get it together? <laughs> what, what's what they we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, well, the old cast, um, they're all in their like 50s and 60s right, right. now, and they're great. They're iconic. They're mm-hmm. so much fun. Japanese hilarious. I get it. Well, she's been gone for a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, but they just, it got to a point where I guess it was, it got a little heavy. So Mm -hmm. they're, they're changing it up with a brand new fresh cast, but the people that are attached to the old housewives cast are getting a legacy show TBD, which is what I want to watch. And that, yeah, that's been killing us because you know, who was the crazy lady? They're all crazy. That's true. Well, there was the one with the big eyes. Ramona Singer. Oh, Ramona, Ramona. Ramona, Yes. Sonia's crazy. Sonia's wild, but Ramona's crazy. Ramona's, yeah, she's not the Ramona coaster. Yeah, I'm here for it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry, um, <laughs> but yeah. Well, you got any other shout outs or anything? I'm um, just everybody at my gym, Jubera Jiu Jitsu. Mm-hmm. It's a great community. I love them. And and where's it at again? It's in Broomfield, Colorado, near Denver. Um, anybody out there? Come holla. Yeah, they're great. Um, I hope. At one point, I can get my parents down there to train and meet everybody. And uh, I know I'm not as consistent as I'd like to be, but I, I care about them all very yeah. much. And just all my friends and family, my, my parents. So mm-hmm. I listen to you guys a lot. So <laughs> Is it as fun as it seems? It is. <laughs> it is. Um, Chris, did you have any questions? No, this has been great. Okay. I haven't had to say anything. Except for a couple. Everyone's happy. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's happy. We forgot you were here. Yeah. <laughs> I should have been just feeding ducks. It would have been all good. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, well, uh, I appreciate you being here and just putting yeah. up with my silly jokes and Ooh, stuff I like, like that. It. Yeah. Um, if anyone has a question, grapplingwithpodcasts at gmail.com. Hit us up on YouTube on the comments. Like and subscribe. Mm-hmm. Other than that. I think that's it. And we're coming for you, Nikita. Nikita, you're dead. Yep. <laughs> Deported. Thank you so much. Later. <laughs> <laughs>